Hi, my name is Ilma and today I'd like to share John 13, 21 to 30. When Jesus had said this, he became troubled in spirit and testified and said, Truly, truly, I say to you that one of you will betray me. The disciples began looking at one another at a loss to know of which one he was speaking. There was reclining on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. So Simon Peter gestured to him and said to him, Tell us who it is of whom he is speaking. He, leaning back thus on Jesus' bosom, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus then answered, That is the one for whom I shall dip the morsel and give it to him. So when he had dipped a morsel, he took and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. After the morsel, Satan then entered into him. Therefore Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. Now no one of those reclining at the table knew for what purpose he had said this to him. For some were supposing because Judas had a money box, that Jesus was saying to him, buy the things we have need for, for the feast, or else that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he went out immediately, and it was night. John 13, 21 to 30. Here's my uh, devotional. Jesus confides to the disciple whom he loved. In this account, Jesus was having his last supper with his disciples. Since he was also God, he knew exactly the hour when he was going to be betrayed and who was going to betray him. The disciples, on the other hand, didn't know among them who was the traitor. John referred to him as the disciple whom Jesus loved. In verse 23, we have a picture of that special love that Jesus had for John. He was reclining on Jesus' bosom. It was at this point when Simon Peter used John's closeness to Jesus to find out who the traitor was. And true enough, on verse 26, Jesus gave John an answer to his question. He said that the one who will dip the morsel is the one who will betray him. Not long after Jesus said it to Jude John, Judas Iscariot was possessed by Satan. It is interesting that Jesus told Judas to do quickly what he was about to do. Meanwhile, all the other disciples were still wondering who among them would do such a terrible disloyalty to their master. They had no clue that Jesus already confided to John who the traitor was. What a picture of love between Jesus and John. Because of his love for John, Jesus confided in his beloved disciple who the traitor would be. Wouldn't we also have such honor if we get very close to Jesus? Wouldn't it be a privilege to be Jesus' confidant? Reflection. What are the benefits of being a disciple whom Jesus loves? Well, Jesus loves us all if we follow him. Um, he hates sin. He hates evil. He still loves and created all human beings. But if they choose to be uh, in the camp of uh, Satan, then they will not be given all the promises that is given to those who love him. So, in a way, Jesus also is expecting us to follow through if we say we are believers. So when we claim we are believers, and yet we do not do what Jesus does, then we are only fooling ourselves. So in this picture, we see what brings, uh, what the effect of uh, loving each other is, the effect of intimacy between John and Jesus. That's why John always referred to himself, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Why wouldn't he? He knew that he loved, he loved, he was loved by his master. So why wouldn't we be claiming confidence in the knowledge that God loves us because we are so close to him? So when we are so close to someone, we can always have the confidence that I am loved by this person. 
Does that happen to you? Does that, is that something you can boast about, that Jesus loves you? So I encourage you to get intimate with the Lord, get closer to Him, get to know Him, and He will confide in you, just like he, how He confided in John. So anything that you get, anyone that you get close to and you invest time on, it will love you back as much as you do. So, well, you don't love just so you can be loved back, but you love out of love. So everything that is out of love, born out of love, you also get the receipt, you also get the reward of being loved. So God is love. We're all created out of love. And if we don't do that, then uh, we get in trouble. But if we always do something out of love, we reap love as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks and photographs. And I hope you subscribe to my channel on YouTube for more videos about the Lord. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.